So now we're going to uh, compute the formula. for the efficient and actually so you know we're interested in efficient unemployment rate but um, you know we can also we also have measures of I mean vacancies unemployment so we also have measures of tightness at any point in time and we know because of the Bellux curve you know when um, unemployment is high vacancies are low so tightness um, is very low when unemployment is low vacancies are high so tightness is very high so there is a one-to-one -one relationship between tightness and unemployment so if you see that tight, so you know, to know whether your labor market is efficient, you can either see whether your unemployment rate is efficient or you can see whether your tightness is efficient. It's exactly the same. And if tightness is too high, you know that you have a negative unemployment gap. If tightness is too low, you know that you have a positive unemployment gap. So looking at unemployment or looking at tightness is just equivalent. But it turns out that the formula for efficient labor market tightness is simpler than the formula for efficient unemployment rate. So we are going to compute that. So you remember the condition for efficiency that we just derived. And the condition for labor market efficiency. It was at the slope of the beverage curve is equal to the slope of the ISO welfare curve, which, as we've said many times now, is minus 1 minus Z over R. Okay, so now we want to, but you see here the unemployment rate that's efficient. In fact, I can. For U star, the efficient unemployment rate is implicit. You, you need to know the function V of U, so you need to know your full function. Basically, you need to estimate. Uh, your full um, beverage curve to be able to figure out you know, at which point uh, this condition is satisfied and then implicitly figure out what is the efficient unemployment rate. What I want is a formula that gives me an explicit expression for the efficient labor market tightness, but it's very easy to get it. So you, you remember the labor market tightness by definition is theta is equal V over U. Okay? Uh, Right, the other, so that's one thing. Then I'm going to define, so V prime of U, it's the slope of the beverage curve. But what I can define instead, so it's the derivative of the beverage curve. Instead, what, what I can define is the elasticity of the beverage curve. And we'll call it the beverage elasticity. And if you want the elasticity of the beverage curve, we'll call it epsilon. And it's d log v d log u, and then um, you know so v prime of u we know is negative. The beverage curve is downward sloping. So this elasticity that I have here will be negative. I'm going to introduce a minus sign. That's just so that I talk about positive elasticity. This time knowing to always convey negative sign. So so beverage, beverage elasticity is going to be minus d log v d log u. So it's normalized. To be positive. Okay. All right. So that's and this is going to be um, a key statistic here. So the beverage elasticity is d log v d log u. Using um, the result we've seen on elasticity, it means that epsilon is minus u over v dv. DU, right? Just using kind of the equivalent expression for the elasticity. But then u over v is just 1 over theta. So it's equal to minus v prime of u divided by theta, right? So that's another expression for our beverage elasticity. But so now we can rewrite the condition for efficiency. So we know this efficiency condition is minus v prime of u is minus 1 over z divided by r. 
okay? And, uh, and then what I can do is I'm, I'm allowed to divide um, both sides here by theta. So let me introduce, I'm gonna divide this by theta and I'm going to multiply it by theta, right? I'm always allowed to multiply the numerator and denominator by the same thing. But then what do I have here? I have a minus v prime of u divided by theta, but this we've just said, this is just the elasticity of uh, the Babbage curve. So this element here with the minus, that's just epsilon, the elasticity of the Babbage curve, as we've seen from this equation here. Okay, so we can rewrite our efficiency condition in a very simple form as theta, and in fact it's efficient with theta star, is going to be 1 minus z divided by epsilon times r. That's all. Such a simple formula. Uh, and so that's a formula for efficiency on the labor market. Okay, so it tells you that um, the efficient labor market tightness is equal to 1 minus z, where z is the social value of unemployment, divided by epsilon, the beverage elasticity, times r, the recruiting cost. And that's all. So that tells you what are the factors that matter for efficiency. You have three key factors to think about labor market efficiency, to understand whether um, the efficient unemployment rate is going to be high, that's when theta star is low, or it's going to be low, that's when theta star is high. Three key factors, you have Z, which is the value of unemployment, and what's the key comparative static? Well, you see if Z goes up, then what happens to theta star? Well, theta star is going to fall, which means that u star is going to go up. Because of course, you know, along the along the beverage curve, if you have a low tightness, you need to have a high unemployment rate. Okay, uh, so that's a key thing. If your unemployment is very valuable, so imagine people have access to a lot of wonderful home production technologies. They can, you know, work from home and do all kinds of things like teach from home or uh, cook at home or you know, farm in their garden, and they can be almost as productive as people who work in the private sector, then unemployment is not such a bad thing, you know, because you're unemployed, but from a social perspective, you're working, except that you're working at home. Uh, so in a world like this, unemployment is not a problem. So you can see, indeed, when the value of unemployment goes up, the tightness that's optimal falls, and the unemployment rate that's optimal goes up. That makes perfect sense. Second key factor, the recruiting cost. And here, what's the key comparative static? So if your routing cost goes up, what happens? So you can see theta star again is going to fall from our formula. And which means that along, you know, because we are along the beverage curve, u star will have to go up. Same logic. If you have a high recruiting cost, you remember it's always a social planner. Right, so if the recruiting cost goes up, um, it's much more, you know, you're right, trying to solve this trade-off between unemployment and vacancies. So vacancies become much more costly. Um, and so you're trying to have basically higher unemployment and fewer vacancies. So you're trying to go down on your beverage curve. So your optimal tightness will fall, your optimal unemployment rate will go up. And then the last key statistic is epsilon. So the elasticity of the beverage curve. And this matters because, you know, what I've been saying is you're always trying to solve this trade-off between vacancies and unemployment. You know, you, you'd like to get rid of both because they're both costly from a welfare perspective, but you can't, you know, you're always on your beverage curve where you can only get rid of one at a time, either vacancies or unemployment. I mean, you can reduce either one or the other, and when you reduce one, you increase the other and, and vice versa. So, um, so it's really always trying to solve a trade-off between vacancy and unemployment. And this elasticity of the beverage curve is telling you 
how easily you can replace unemployment with vacancies. When the elasticity is, is very high, you can very easily, by cutting unemployment a bit, uh, when the elasticity is high, if you cut unemployment a bit, it's going to be um, very costly. You'll have many, many more uh, vacancies. So, it, but on the other hand, if you increase unemployment a bit, if your, if your beverage curve is very elastic, so it means it's very um, steep, you can cut on vacancies a lot. So when epsilon goes up, it means by that by increasing just a bit your unemployment rate, you can cut a lot of vacancies. So you know this is pushing the trade-off towards having more unemployment because sure it's costly to have a bit more unemployment, but it, it allows you to gain a lot in terms of vacancies and, and reduce the number of recruiters. So with a very steep beverage curve, a beverage curve that's very elastic. Uh, then you know unemployment becomes more favorable. So indeed, you know when the elasticity goes up, theta stars the efficient tightness falls, and u stars the efficient unemployment rate is going to go up. Okay, so this is and that's the intuition that this elasticity um, governs your trade-off between uh, unemployment and vacancies. Okay, so this is this is the logic and this is your key formula. So it's a beautiful formula. It's super simple. It only involves three statistics. So if you're a government you're trying to target, you know, you want to be at full employment, which means you want to have a labor market that operates efficiently. You just need to know what's the social value of unemployment, what's the elasticity of the beverage curve, what's the recruiting cost, and then you know where your efficient tightness is and therefore where your, how your efficient labor market operates.